Okay, you will agree with me that the Leicester match was a desperate and depressing win. It actually showed that Manchester United are going nowhere fast. They did actually nothing to help themselves outside maybe Rashford hitting the post to actually win this game. Uh, Leicester threw uh, the silly Soyunku actually won the match for Manchester United with that rash uh, challenge inside the box. One thing I am going to ask you fans is to let me know in the comments, do you think that Manchester United is actually now adopting a strategy of looking for penalties? It is getting quite a lot of penalties. And if you look at some of the play and how the players are always ready to go down, you'd be tempted to think that Manchester United is employing this tactic. This is not the first time Manchester United has pulled something like this. They also used to look for the free kick with Mata converting. You remember those days when Mata was deadly from the free kick. You could tell by the play that Manchester United was looking for something around the edge of the area. Has Ole Gunnar Solskjaer become so desperate as to use penalties as a strategy for Manchester United to get by since he knows that uh, there's nothing else he can actually do to attack the opposition. Like I said in my preview of the Leicester match, uh, Manchester United is only route to go uh, was Paul Pogba and that has actually been shut down because Paul Pogba was not available. So let me know in the comments below, do you think that Manchester United is now using penalties as a strategy to get by? At this point, Manchester United has got nobody to look to in terms of performance as none of the players are performing and this does not bode well for the future. Uh, without Pogba in the squad, control position actually shifted to Ashley Young. I mean, Ashley Young is an okay player, but how many clubs do you think would actually have high ambitions by looking towards Ashley Young? But one thing I'm going to say, Ashley Young is still the best fullback Manchester United has. He's creating more chances than most of the forwards. Going forward, he's also controlling the position from his defensive berth. So looking at uh, how things were going, we need someone who actually can control the position. Like I was complaining last time, Paul Pogba is not there. Manchester United were going to actually just move the ball around, which they did. But Ashley Young stepped up together with Tom McTominay. So going forward, I think Luke Shaw, even if he comes back from injury, should be replaced by Ashley Young. I don't know what you think about that. Let me know in the comments. Yes, he's not a popular figure. Yes, he's been flagged for diving here and there, but like it or not, he is the best we have right now. And I know a lot of you are not going to appreciate that considering the fact that there's now Aaron Juan Bissaka and someone uh, people are excited about. But the thing is, Ashley Young is doing better in the games that he has been on the pitch than Aaron Juan Bissaka. If you actually even notice Manchester United, we're talking a lot about Juan Bissaka uh, when he actually came to the squad, but they've been forced to actually quiet uh, down a bit about that because there's someone else actually performing mean better but i think in terms of uh, marketing they're not ready to acknowledge that ashley young is the best right now so they're not really talking about it but i think with more starts ashley young is going to impose himself and do a young on show like he did on di maria and so many others in the past i told you in the review the scouting video that i made about daniel james that daniel james is going to be found out very soon because even if he's a lightning quick player, exciting player, ATC, he's a one-dimensional player just like Marshall, a uh, one-dimensional player just like Hazard and Robin, even though he's not as good at being one-dimensional as uh, Hazard and Robin. Hazard and Robin, you can see them coming, but there's nothing you can do about it. It seems like people have already started figuring out what to do with Daniel James. Uh, if you notice, they were actually double marking him, triple marking him, getting him out of the game, and he ended up having an uneventful game. Uh, expect this to continue because what Premier League coaches do is they learn from previous matches how to deal with certain elements and they definitely now know how to deal with Daniel James. So mark my words when I say that kids season is going to slow down uh, very fast. Another thing that I actually mentioned was that Victor Lindelof uh, should not have been started because Leicester City is a team that had created or forced errors from the opposition in the last three games straight and they did the same for Lindelof even though Madison failed to convert in a day that uh, Leicester City actually let itself down. If you notice, uh, Madison wrestled Lindelof off the ball in the area, turned and shot at uh, David De Gea from an angle and De Gea saved the ball. So. Lindelof fulfilling that promise of being error prone and I don't see that ending anytime soon Looks like he's in a rut. He's actually in a downturn I don't know why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is not also giving Royal the chance. Yes, he's got his own ideologies But I think it's actually time to bring Marcos Royal into the frame 
Back to Ashley Young, like I said, I'm not exactly a fan, but his numbers are doing the talking for him in the absence of Paul Pogba and even during uh, the games when Paul Pogba was playing when uh, Ashley Young was introduced after Shaw got injured. Ashley Young has actually been our second biggest creative force uh, behind Paul Pogba and he showed this again uh, in the game against Leicester by creating the most chances for Manchester United with two. So what I would suggest is actually when Paul Pogba comes back, you might want to leave Luke Shaw at the left back or even replace uh, Luke Shaw with Royal. Since Luke Shaw is not offering anything going forward, Royal also does not offer much going forward. Actually, I lied. Royal is actually quite a force uh, with his shots when he gets into the area. Replace Luke Shaw with uh, Marcos Royal, who can actually defend better than Shaw, which will give us more cover. If you noticed, uh, Leicester City had about... 10 11 crosses flying in and half of those from the left back flank continuing the trend that uh, our wing backs are leaking so if you put royal that will plug the leak somewhat on the left provide a bit of a attacking threat that royal can actually provide but the most important thing is this will push ashley young up front you know uh, if you push pogba and ashley young up front maybe pogba playing the 10 uh, or even Mata and Ashley Young playing uh, the 7th, you're going to actually, sorry, the number 11, you're actually going to see more creativity coming from Manchester United and more chances being created. This will increase Manchester United's ability to actually penetrate defences. So it might be an unpopular opinion, especially among English fans, uh, but maybe to put James on the bench and put Ashley Young on that wing would actually serve Manchester United better right now. So Royal on the left back, Ashley Young on the wing at the left, Paul Pogba on the number 10, uh, probably Marshall on the gun, and on the right you can put Marcus Rashford because there's really nobody else to put there. Maybe even you want to put James or Pereira there, but put Ashley Young on the left wing for more creativity, more chances and more penetration. In the absence of Paul Pogba, you actually saw Scott McTominay coming to the fray. Yes, as a normal player, there's nothing really special about him, but his figures actually impressed me a lot in the absence of Paul Pogba. So the question is something you might want to let me know in the comments. Is Paul Pogba the undoing of Scott McTominay? Is Scott McTominay living in the shadow of Paul Pogba? I think so, because it seems like when Pogba is not on the pitch, the kid is shining. So how do you accommodate both players and get the best out of them? Like I said already, push Pogba to the number 10 role so that he does not compete with Scott McTominay and come Vine Scott McTominay with Matic, which was not too bad a combination, even though Matic might suffer in games that have a fast pace. If you want to consider the fact that Manchester United is not good on the high press, you want to put players who are actually better than the rest in terms of pressing defenses. So you want Ashley Young on the left wing, on the right wing, you want Marcus Rashford, on the gunman, you want Anthony Marshall. Paul Pogba will obviously be the one weak link because Paul Pogba is not very good at pressing and is not that disciplined. So if you're playing a pressing game, you might want to put Pereira on the number 10 or Jesse Lingard and then Pogba drop him back to the centre midfield with Scott McTominay, even though there'll be leaks there. But uh, in case you're wondering how we can press teams, that is the selection that you want to put. If you notice, Leicester did not have a problem actually playing from the back and being able to press teams will help us like uh, Watford was assisted in the Arsenal game where they wanted to play from the back. They were pressed and actually Arsenal showed how shoddy it was in position. So that's something you want to consider. Brendan Rodgers proved that he was a better coach than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in spite of the loss because he did make some changes which actually changed uh, Leicester City's fortunes on the pitch. Unfortunately, he did this a bit too late, uh, continuing the trend where uh, teams are showing Manchester United a bit of respect, too much respect considering what it is. When Ayose Perez was actually brought uh, onto the pitch uh, sometime in the second half, all of Manchester United's shots on target dried up. So it was making shots on target and uh, Brendan Rodgers identified this issue and solved it uh, once and for all. I think after Ayose Perez was actually introduced, there was only one more shot on target after, out of about 10, 11 or 12 by uh, a lot of teams so he basically shut the match down even though he failed to actually take advantage this is an advantage i mean this is an example of a coach uh taking the game to the other coach and making differences or a change from the bench something which Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has not shown us it seems that whatever he puts out on the pitch is what he's dealing with uh this is actually pretty sad
So that is it folks, uh, a desperate win for Manchester United, a depressing win, I did not see a lot of enthusiasm from the fans after the Manchester United win over Leicester and I can understand why uh, it does not look good for the future, Manchester United was a passenger on that pitch, Brendan Rodgers called all the shots but Soyunku spoiled the day for him, unfortunately for him but going forward Manchester United is actually hanging on to fourth and I have predicted that that's the best that it's ever going to get this season. But it doesn't look like it'll be able to hold on to that position for long. Other teams are going to come for it. Uh, let me know uh, in the comments what you think. Do you think it's actually going to hold on to fourth or go a little better? Maybe hit third because definitely second or first is out of the question for Manchester United, at least for this season. Uh, this is the critique. Uh, thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification bell. Share this video and let's get the talk about Manchester United cracking because trust me, it's going to be a long season. Cheers.